hi everybody. Uh, thanks for having me, and I will try to walk you through why wireless is an important driver in the future for automation industry that I'm sure of and I believe strongly in. So first of all, I would like to thank Emicon, our partner here in Turkey, that uh, invited me. So this will be my first time in Istanbul. It's been great so far. So for roughly half an hour, I will try to walk you through different perspectives about waves and how they communicate and send information. So to start, waves has been important in guiding and communication for a long time. These guys have been a lot around for ages and then communicate and navigate through waves, echoing and getting themselves a communication and understanding of the environment. So why can't we, as humans, utilize the same functions with waves? Of course we can. And we do that with wireless technologies. So what will I try to talk about for this half hour? So I will give you an idea why and why not wireless? Because wireless, wireless is not the ultimate solution. It has pros and cons, so I will give you an idea what I see and what they are. I will give you an understanding about what I see and we see at HMS is Industry 4.0. And what does, does that mean? What does that implicate for the automation industry? I will have a brief overview of the technologies, trying not to go too deep and in depth, but just seeing they are different wireless technologies, they solve different problems. And after that, I will sh talk about a few real world cases where we use different wireless technologies in different environments and why they work. So, why people don't go wireless? Fear of change. That is in the human nature. We are always fearful of something new and something unknown. So the unknown, what is out there, we know what we have, we don't know what we're getting at. And that is really, really scary for most of us. We talk about organizational changes, changing your job, moving your house. It's all fear because we don't know what's out there. Fear of stability. That is also there. And we have done a few surveys with HMS at different fairs with different customers, and the, all these topics come up. What and why is it so scary? So yes, it is complex, but the complexity is not there to hinder us. It's complex because it gives us opportunities. So now we'll try to explain to you why you should use a wireless technology. The wireless technology is something you shouldn't use just because you can. You should see and watch for your actual needs. Because there are certain needs and use cases where wireless is really, really efficient. Not in all cases, but in some cases. But then you need to understand what is the problem I'm going to solve? Why am I going to solve it? So I'm going to move you into quite a busy slide and try to give you a way through it. Automation, as I said, we are talking about industry 4.0, and automation is a big part of our industry. We want our equipment to work all day and every day. Don't stop, get productivity, and get that efficiency up and running. We want to be flexible. We want to be the flexibility to meet and understand what we have. Greater mobility, freedom of movement, collaboration between robots, not just m machines and men. We need to collaborate the whole plants. Remote management, monitoring, we all been through COVID right of this. We need to redu reduce the workers' exposures to unpleasant, dangerous environments, a lot of unnecessary necessary travel, because sometimes we can't travel for numerous reasons. Better da da data, to get the predictiveness in there, to get that out. The ease of use, yes, human-machine interface rather than a CLI. We are now getting in our industry a lot of the digital natives, meaning people, children that has grown up with a smartphone in their hand. I'm from an older generation. I used to type code by line, so I'm pretty confident in that. But if you only use the graphical interface, you want to be there. 
So bring your own device, your own home tablet to access a machine instead of plugging in, working on a terminal. That's something you want to be. We also have save the connectors from wear and tear because if something tears and breaks, you need to stop the production. And we know that that ex is extremely costful and we don't want to be there. So we come down to reducing cost. It's generally cheaper to set up a few access points, bringing wireless communication over, then pulling up cables, climbing up, having workers being there, moving, changing walls, whatever, through floors. It's easier to scale if you've done your research when you start going wireless, to scale that and grow in your suit, that works better. If you compare that to reinstall new cables, drill new holes, connect another building, you're on the 10th floor on one building and the 12th on another, pulling a cable through the ground and up in the next building, really, really expensive, complex, you need to go through a lot of people, but a wireless link between those two buildings sorts your problem. Yeah. So eliminate ex expensive maintenance and heavy cabling. That is important for us. Long distance communication. I was in that on the first slide, talking about that. Reduce traveling. That is important. But it also, if you have multiple machines stationed in multiple places, to get that information in and then process it. So again, all these things makes wireless a valid option and something that we need to think about. So we are here next to the 5G arena. We set Industry 4.0. We were all about talking about it. I will try to walk you quickly through what I see that it is and why it's important for us to think about. If you see here, 1850s, before that, we always ordered unique products, right? You went to the shoemaker and ordered your pair of shoes, then he made them, produced them specifically for you. So very unique product variety. Every product was unique. Then we started with our mass production, full industrialization. We talk Henry Ford, you know, everything goes through. So, but the flexibility was so-so with the Henry Ford, as he quoted, you can get your T Ford in any color you like as long as it's black. So the choice went away. But we need to come back. So this is what's happening right now with our digital opportunities. We are coming back, back to the choice of the consumer. So instead of having a pull, push that we have been having from the big industries pushing product, this is what you're getting. We are coming towards the pull, mass concentration, meaning unique, something after 94, this was a big decision made in Germany, personalized production. You can see a few examples in the 5G arena, you can get your names on products, type them in, and then the production starts. You can order cars that way today. They start producing your car after you order it. So if you want white seats in a green car with the purple lights, you can get that. That is what's happening now. But to be fully there, we need to have flexibility in our industries, be able to change our product lines, and that is something wireless can do for us. So wireless is a big thing, as I've been on. I will try to give you a brief view of the different technologies. I've brought them out in a graph like this, meaning up here we have high bandwidth in a closed area, wireless gigabit alliance. Big amounts of data, short distance. Small amounts of data, short distance. They have a different advantage. Bluetooth, IO-Link, wireless heart, but they can still be useful for us. Somewhere in the middle, we have Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi aligns how you can manage data. We've got a little bit more distance, a little bit smarter, how to utilize the frequency. And as I said with the bat, here is all waves, but they are different wavelengths and they work differently. So this is where we need to be careful in how we utilize our technologies. And going further to distance, here we call low power wide area alternatives. There's LTEM, LoRa, Narrowband IoT, Sigfox, the different alternatives, big range, good for massive IoT, but the volume of data is not there. So in the top right corner, here, we got the cellular structure. We got 4G LTE, well deployed. We're all talking about 5G, 
we hear th people throwing URLC around, meaning low latency. Yes, it's there. It's expensive. We can get that, but do we need it? That's what I'm, you need always to think about. What is my use case? So looking at cellular standards, what is 4G to 5G? That's not an increment. That's a generation. Completely new grasp when you lift tenfold of speeds, a thousand factor in data. This gives you completely new opportunities, but you don't need to go 5G every time. Sometimes 4G is sufficient, or you select another technology that's sufficient for you. So what is that? I mentioned CAT M1, narrowband IoT. Yeah, something happened in 2016 bringing out the cellular technologies. We realized not every device needs more data. They might need better range, less throughput, not faster. So that's why around 2016, 3GPP divided. So they're, they're still cellular technologies, CAT M1, narrowband IoT, but they focus on more devices. Basically, we have this separation when we talk about those things. We have massive IoT, all the small devices. You have parking meters and capable networks, smart building. They don't send a lot of data. It's not time critical, but they need to be ensured that it goes forward. That's when you need those types of protocol. And then you have the critical IoT when we talk about industry. A lot of those, the robots needs to be there. If you're talking about security, you need to guarantee that that information goes back and forth. The Wi-Fi standards also move through here. You see the different four, five, and six. They're generations, we improve, we have become better and smarter of utilizing the same frequency and spectrum. That is basically what is happening. So Wi-Fi 6, 5G, are they competing? Yeah, no, yes and no. But they are solved different parts of the problem. As I keep coming back to, you sometimes need advances of a cellular, but that's expensive. So ask yourselves, what is my use case? What am I actually gonna use it for? I usually categorize these with Bluetooth as well. I would say Wi-Fi is total anarchy, meaning every station screams, it's my turn, it's my turn. So there's no structure. And then you come somewhere in between how you communicate, it's Bluetooth. That's sort of a democracy. Everybody asks politely, can I use the space and then hands over? So we share. Bluetooth is good at sharing, but then you come to cellular, and that's a clear monarchy. The king rules, he sits at the core, decides that device, you get to use airspace, you don't. It's very clear who decides. So you can see the different radio technologies, it's different hierarchies. I will try to give you a sense of uh, what, what these technologies can be used and how they can be used. So I'm bringing you a few live use cases. So what you can see in this picture is a Bluetooth use case. But this little device carries a Bluetooth communications. This is a picture of an AGV communicating with Bluetooth in a huge German car manufacturers. They actually build their own AGVs and they decided Bluetooth is our way of communicating. And using this device, because the form factor gives an antenna and they want to ensure the traffic comes through, it's not a lot of the data, but the Wi-Fi was not an alternative because it's noisy, as I said. Everybody screams there. They need to ensure that the data comes through. Not a lot, but positioning and information. So they went with Bluetooth. Here we have an industrial Wi-Fi use case. Uh, on top here, uh, the laser is not working. You can see the little black hood, the brother of this one. So, but we're using Wi-Fi. So different wavelengths, different structure, more data. So this is a retrofit. This industry was here. This is food and processing, meaning if you open your cabinet, dust gets in, water can get in, and destroys your equipment. So you need to have the communication outside the cabinet. But as I said, we are now meeting more and more digital natives coming out to the field. They want to open the cabinet, connect the connector, or work with the terminal. They have their tablet. That's their tool. They can directly connect using Wi-Fi technology, for example, stream the data, get the analysis out. 
They don't even need to be in the factory unless something is wrong. They can get it up if you have an access point in the roof as well. So that's giving you an example of how Wi-Fi can be used in the industry floor. So leaving those two, as I said, a bit shorter range, moving on to a bit of a distance. I mentioned low power wide area networks. So low power wide area networks. Why is low power so important? Yeah, so we're talking CAT M1 narrowband IoT. For example, here we have a road sign that ha goes on, runs on battery, but they need to get a position in. So it's solar cell power, we don't, can't use a lot of electricity. So the network needs to be able to turn it off, and that is possible with these technologies. So again, we use the same form factor, completely different radio technology, to bring that information out. A few data points, send the data out, where am I? I'm working. That's enough. They don't need a lot of data from a roadside. They need to know it's working and where it is, so it's not stolen. That means the battery lives for longer, even if you get a cloudy day someday. So moving up to the high-speed end case. Again, this is from a sink mine in Askersund. So deep down a mine, and again, a mine, you think, yeah, radio waves in a mine, yeah, that gives you a problem. Uh, they chose LTE, as a 4G in the mine, but they have a certain antenna called the leaky cable that I pulled down the mine, and this picture is from the control of the pumps. They pump up excess water and slag products from the mine so they can keep working. Before, they used to have one power cable and one communication cable, giving the issue that the workers need to move these two cables. When the power was in, they got a green light, the communication cable might be broken, pump stopped, need to clean all the pipes, total stop in production in the mine. Now they're using LTE, very happy. The guy who's moving the cable, he needs to move one cable, and if it's that's working, everything is centrally monitoring in a nice cabin above ground instead inside the mine. Again, giving you a chance to see what different wireless technologies can do for you. So again, same form factor, Looks like the same product, but we have four completely different use cases. So what I've been saying a few times, you need to understand what problem am I trying to solve and why. Because sometimes cable is the best alternative, but if it isn't, choose wisely and talk to your friends and colleagues that know these, because wireless technology is a bit tricky, it's not straightforward, but we can always help. So here you have a sketch of an industry. You can see it in gray. There's machines, there's robots, not uh, much unlike what you see in the arena here. But again, it's connected, it's automated. It's not a person working every machine. So now I've been talking for a while. I would like to give you with, leave you with a few t key takeaways. So. Please don't be afraid at look at a wireless as an option for your solution, but do it wisely and an option. As I've shown, different technologies solve different problems. Coming back, this is linked together. You need to understand what is the problem I'm going to solve. So you make the right choice, because if you make the wrong choice and have the wrong expectation, you will be dissatisfied maybe fear the change even more the next time. So consult with somebody, have a discussion, understand what problems you're trying to solve. And I hope, I'm, a co I'm convinced, wireless technologies are here to help us revolution our industry, going full on industry 4.0, being more efficient, having a safer and nicer work environment, invite the new digital natives into our world to make sure that you know, you're no, known to your interfaces where you're growing. That's how we work today. The dirty factory, we are moving away from that. The, the optimized, giving a chance to see what's out there. So with those three, I thank you all for listening. Uh, I've written a white paper about this. Uh, so if you want to read more, you can uh, scan that QR code and you go to our link. 
and there's a white paper explaining basically what I've shown. Uh, so again, thank you for listening. If there's any questions, I'm more than willing to take those. If you don't want to ask them in this forum, we have one of our booths in the arena. You can approach me any time or the Emicon booth in the next hall. I will be arraigned and you can get my details there. Okay, thank you. You want me here? Thank you.